Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco. Oh! The new Intel CPUs that have just been released, the Core Ultra 7, 5 and 9, I believe. And man, it's bad. And sorry about not having these reviews ready, of course, because first of all, Intel does not send any kind of CPUs or GPUs. Even though I did some reviews on their GPUs, um, even some recently of the RK770, I'm still with lots of work doing the review of one of those CPUs, but on the mobile side, I believe it's the Core 7 Ultra 155H, something like that, which is once again a mobile side on a mini computer. So I couldn't have time for everything, but I will make an analysis. And by the way, we have lots and lots of tests here, like synthetic benchmarks browser that we'll go into. Uh, even emulation, PlayStation 3 and Switch, which is really, really awesome, and overclocking and so on. But for now, we are just going for the game test at 1080p, which is the more relevant CPU side. Uh, 720p, I mean, makes no sense, but anyway. And as for the relative performance, we start with relative performance and average FPS. Uh, which already doesn't look that great. So we have the Core Ultra 9 285K with power, limited, re with power limits removed. So, <laughs> I mean, just let the chip consume what it wants to consume. And it is still below the Ryzen 5 9600. Not the 9700X, not the 9900X, the 9600. <laughs> And every Intel fanboy was saying that uh, Ultra 9 285K would completely demolish the 7800X 3D. And yeah, no. It is still around 9% faster than the Ultra 9 285K, which is the best CPU Intel has to offer now. Well, of course, if we go to the 4900K and so on, it is really, really close to the 7800X 3D, but at the same time, it has or have those power issues in terms of voltages and so on, so on, so on. So we do have a, a generation that consumes way less power because we'll go into that, but at the same time, yeah, it performs worse. And like today's sponsor, for example, that performs pretty well. Today's video sponsor is GVG More. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. And now we start with Alan Wake and even though this game is kind of GPU sided, way GPU sided, um, yeah, we have the 7800X 3D, we don't have the 1% lows, we only have the averages, but we do have the, um, the Alan Wake performing slightly better on all these CPUs, but I mean, it's it's 3 FPS compared to the Core Ultra 9, but if we go to the Core Ultra 7, let's say, which is the much cheaper version, um, we still have it like 4 to 5 FPS slower than the, um, than the top tier CPUs like the 7800X 3D that are currently at the same price as the Ultra 7 265K. As we go to Baldur's Gate, which is a more CPU-driven or CPU-heavy title, we have the 7900X 3D and the 7950X 3D on the top once again. And then we have the Core Ultra 9 now performing decently well, but still, it is performing decently well, but still below the 13700K and the 14700K, 13900K and 14900K. Okay. Intel completely changed the architecture, so there are no more uh, threads, only real cores, but instead of having threads, we have real performance cores and then e-cores, which I believe is the correct thing to do. Now, it is the correct thing to do, but it will have some handicaps here and there, and this is one of them, so Windows might need to have an upgraded scheduler, um, and people might need to wait, let's say, half a year, one year in order for the core ultra CPUs to work properly. So these are really early benchmarks and in the same, in the same way that the 24H2, the Windows 11 version, actually helped the performance of the Ryzen chips, it will also help and improve the performance of the core ultra CPUs. But for now, this is very, very limiting and not, not cool at all. For example, the Core Ultra 7 265K, it's still like lining with the Ryzen 7 9700X. As for Counter-Strike 2, it is even worse. In terms of Counter-Strike 2, I would expect, well, 
we now don't really have any kind of hyper threading. It's just performance scores. The performance scores are really good for Counter Strike 2. <laughs> yeah, but the, the lower frequencies just kind of handicap the, the Core Ultra 9 or the Core Ultra CPUs compared to the previous ones. For example, if we go to Counter Strike 2, which uses a Source 2 engine, it also takes advantage of the 3D cache, and that's why the 7800X 3D and the 7950X 3D are the best CPUs. But at the same time, if you look, for example, at the 99 950X, 9900X, 9700X, and so on, they perform decently well, and this happens due to frequency. So not only cash, but frequency also matters a lot for Counter-Strike 2, and that's why the 4900K is here, and the 3900K is here as well, and even the 14700K is very, very close um, to the 5800X 3D, and even the 9900X, which uh, kind of delivers a very small difference percentage-wise. If we go to the Core Ultra CPUs, first of all, the scheduler once again makes a lot of difference, and I'm pretty sure that the performance will get improved, but the frequency got reduced, and in some cases considerably reduced, and I believe that's why we see the results that we see here. So only, only, of course, only 516.2 FPS compared to the last generation X3D CPU with 585 FPS. And even if we compare to the 4900K, the best Intel CPU up to date, 559.4 FPS, which once again, still above the newer CPU. So the newer CPUs are actually slower than the older ones, than the older generation. And people were complaining about Zen 5 and they complained correctly. Zen 5 was really, really underwhelming. Um, but it seems that on the Intel side, things are even worse. With the recent generation actually being slower than the last generation, that's, that's not even funny, I shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> and with Cyberpunk 2077, things are even worse. And when I say worse, they are, they are really, really bad. For example, if we look at the 9700K, the 7800X 3D, the 9700X, sorry, uh, we have close to 200 FPS, and here we have close to 215. And even if we, if we look at the 4900K, 178 FPS, which is actually Pretty, pretty nice for a single player game like Cyberpunk and then you can simply use frame generation to boost things a bit. So it's not that bad. But as soon as we go to the core ultra CPUs, they are really, really bad. And that's, that's, it's basically here that we know that scheduling has major issues. For example, look at the core ultra 9, 280K, 285K, sorry, I'm still, I'm still putting the numbers in my head. And the stock values that we have are 160 FPS according to Tech Power Up, of course. And if we go to the 12900K, it's like 3 FPS less. So we have the 12900K, then we have the 3900K, the 4900K, and now we have the Core Ultra 9 285K, and still this one is only 3 FPS faster than the 12900K, which is... I mean, really, really underwhelming. And there are games where it kind of performs decently well, for example, Hogwarts Legacy, because once again, it is not that CPU driven, and we have the CPU performing on par with the 7950X 3D, 7950X, and so on. But as soon as we go to other games like Elden Ring, for example, it performs even worse than the, than the 7600X and the 13600K, which is just not acceptable. You're buying a new CPU that performs that performs way worse, actually, than a CPU from two generations in the past, I, I mean. And the only game I've seen so far where the Core Ultra CPUs actually perform decently well is in Spider-Man Remastered. And this might actually be one of those scenarios where the scheduler is functioning properly, or maybe the game just the game engine just takes advantage of the extra bandwidth that we have in terms of memory. But in this case scenario, yes, the Core Ultra 9 finally finally, is compared to the 13700K, 14700K, and really, really close to the 14900K and 13900K, being slightly faster than the 7900X 3D here. But, according to my tests, I actually tested the, the, 79, the 7900X 3D and the 9900X in this scenario, and they were, they were really, really close to the 7800X 3D, so... 
maybe something's wrong here, I don't know. But once again, the memory, I believe that that's the memory that's making the difference here, not the CPU. As soon as we enable ray tracing, we need even more memory bandwidth too for this for this specific scenario of Spider-Man Remastered. So yeah, like I told you, it is memory related, not CPU related. But as soon as we go to Elden Ring once again, yeah, just there. Bad results, really bad results. And we now saw that the gaming results are not that great, but at the same time, we have something that actually improved, the power consumption. Power consumption in single threaded, for example, if we go to the Core Ultra 9 285K, we have a stock of 26 uh, under a single thread, of course, 26 watts. As soon as we go to the 4900K, we have 11 watts more, which may not seem much, but percentage-wise is, is actually a lot. And if we go to power consumption in terms of multi-threaded, the Ultra 9 is at 235 watts, while the 4900K is at 281 watts. But I mean, it is normal that it consumes less power, because if it performs worse as well, it needs to at least consume less power. But I'll repeat this again, because I believe that with proper scheduling and so on, these CPUs will get much better. Now, power consumption applications, uh, in applications with 47 tests average, man, tech power up is crazy, crazy good in these tests. 47 tests average of the power consumption applications. This is just crazy. And we have, once again, the Core Ultra 9 uh, consuming considerably less than the 4900K. So from 180 watts to 132 watts. As for power consumption in terms of gaming, the difference is also there, especially there from, like I told you, 94 watts, while the 4900K consumes 149 watts. So in terms of power consumption only, it actually puts it on par with the likes of 9900X, 13700K, and if we go, for example, a bit lower um, for, for the Ultra 7, we also have it pretty on par with the 9700X and the 7700X and so on. But at the same time, once again, in most scenarios, it performs worse. So it at least had to consume less power. As for the temperatures, Tech Power Up also has some really interesting ones. For example, here with the Noctua NHD15, an awesome cooler actually. And yeah, the results are kind of okay-ish. We have the 4900K here with 87 degrees, while the 285K with the limits removed goes to 94 degrees, and normal it goes to 88. So it is still more or less on par with the 4900K in terms of CPU temperature. But in terms of gaming CPU temperature, well, this is where the difference goes. We have the Core Ultra 9 going to 58 degrees, while the 4900K in the same workload, I repeat, the same workload goes up to 73 degrees. So at least these chips are kind of cool, especially for gaming load scenarios with uh, Ultra 7 going, going to 53 degrees, and uh, the, the, the Ultra 9 going to like 50 degrees, 49 degrees. I mean, these chips are really, really cool gaming wise, but again, they perform worse. If we go for the, for the older generation CPUs, 4900K73, um, really close to the 7800X 3D, which is a really, really hot chip as well. But in terms of temperatures, generally, I mean, these, these chips are kind of nice, really close to the 12900K, which is not that bad. And if you thought Intel CPUs were done getting beaten up, yeah, it doesn't stop here. Now we have PS3 emulation benchmarks as well. This, this was one of the things where emulation, once again, where Intel CPUs kind of, they completely demolished the AMD ones, the, at least the AMD counterparts. And since the 7000 series where AMD added the AVX 512 instructions and kind of doubled the bandwidth with the 9000 series, I mean, since then, the performance has been uh, improved massively. And now we have the 7950X and the 7900X being the best performers here, but with the Core Ultra 9 performing decently well as well, while the Core Ultra 5, well, stays below the 9600X and the 14700K, which is not which is not acceptable. I mean, the Core Ultra 9 performs decently well in this scenario, but all the others, like the Core Ultra 5 and the Core Ultra 7, perform really, really bad, with the Core Ultra 7 somehow performing worse than the Core Ultra 5, which means, once again, scheduling isn't working as it should. And if we go to switch emulation with a Rio Jinx with Super Mario Kart 8, it gets even worse with basically all the AMD CPUs 
winning amd 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 on the 13th spot that the 14900k comes and then the ultra 7 and the ultra 5 are just ridiculous man these cpus really need an update i just don't want to believe that they are this bad but I mean, it is impossible that everything is bad on the CPUs. Not everything is bad. For example, as soon as we go to AV1 encoding, usually media encoding, we have the AV1 codec. Well, the Core Ultra CPUs actually do a good job. Thank God. For example, if we go to the Core Ultra 9 and the Core Ultra 7, of course, because if we go to the Core Ultra 5 once again, they get beaten by the 13700K, 14700K, 7900X, and so on. And the Core Ultra 9 and the Core Ultra 7 now perform slightly better than the 14900K and the 13900K, which is actually a good sign. As we go to H.265 or AGVC encoding, the thing goes the same way with the Ultra 9 and the Ultra 7 performing decently well, but the Ultra 5 being completely, yeah, demolished, with, demolished, which is not that bad considering, I mean, it's still faster than the 9700X here, so that's fine. And if we go to the usual AVC codec or the H.264, uh, yeah, it's more or less the same with the 9700X and the 7700X and, and even the 7800X 3D being considerably slower than the Core Ultra 5 and the Core Ultra 9 and the Core Ultra 7 being there on the top, which is not nice actually. Like rendering, where the Core Ultra 9 and the Core Ultra 7 actually do a pretty decent job, with the Core Ultra 7 getting really, really close to the 7950X and the 7900X 3D. Yeah, the single core performance is higher than the 4900K and this proves once again that they have issues with scheduling. If the single core performance is higher than the 4900K, is it, it is almost in possible that in these partic particular scenarios of gaming um, the, f the Core Ultra 9 is considerably slower than the 4900K, but I mean Intel should have worked with Microsoft before in order to make things work properly. But, but yeah, and in terms of rendering, once again, with Blender, the Core Ultra 9 and Ultra 7, and even the Ultra 5 do decently well, with the Core Ultra 5 being really close to the 12900K and slightly faster than the 5950X, and really close, once again, to the 7900X. I mean, it's 10 seconds, which is not that much, so it's considerably close, with Corona and so on. Yeah, in terms of rendering and, and professional workloads, these CPUs are fine, so once again, I believe that they need a really big scheduling update, maybe some BIOS updates in order to function properly as well. And yeah, guys, that's basically all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I mean, these new CPUs are kind of a flop, at least for now, because in gaming they're performing worse than, they, than their own Intel counterparts from, from the previous generation. It seems that this generation is more or less like the generation of GPUs that we have. Uh, like the RX 7000 series and the RTX 4000 series, but worse. Core Ultra 9, yeah, the only thing that they are better at, at least now, is productivity in most times, and of course, um, yeah, temperatures and power draw, because anything else in terms of pure performance, they're worse. Thank you very much for watching, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about these Core Ultra CPUs. If you have one, if you want to buy one, if you are considering now the 9000 Series X 3D CPUs, and by the way, I'll have one of those for review, AMD uh, will send me one, which is nice actually. The first video that I'll make, since lots of you were complaining about the review, having lots and lots of information, the first video that I'll, that I'll make will be 5800X 3D, versus 7800X 3D versus 9800X 3D. Just for you guys to, to see. Um, but yeah, but yeah, interesting in fact. See you guys in the next video and don't forget, leave your comment in the, the comment section and thank you Tech Power Up for the article. By the way, link will be in the description because they have way, way more information that you, that you may want to see. So go check the link in the description. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.